Napoli have gone from champions last season in the Serie A to 10th this season. Completely missing out on the European spots, even though Italy most likely going to get nine spots in Europe altogether. This club has got some wonderful players and potentially could lose some of them due to this. So it looks like the team is going to need a massive rebuild, potentially lose some good players and then bring some better players in. This rebuild is going to take place in the 24-25 season with no European football and then we're going to have five seasons from there to see if we can bring some silverware to Napoli, get them back to the top of Serie A and maybe even get a bit of European silverware coming in. So we are joining Napoli at the end of the 23-24 season. We've tried to emulate it as close as possible to real life. We've hit them here finishing ninth, so that's no European football. And no European football means most likely we are going to lose our better players. So I've got Osimhen and Cratches Valley both on the transfer list. In real life, they are both rumoured with moves away as well. So it makes sense. And that will kick off the rebuild of Napoli and we've managed to make a massive sale. Victor Osimhen is gone, 93 million going up to 97 million. Without European football it's going to happen, he wanted to leave, obviously I think in real life he will probably leave the season go to, I know there's Chelsea, Arsenal interested, maybe PSG might be interested now that Mbappe is going, so yeah it was the right thing to do. Haven't managed to sell uh, Castrovelli yet. Just not really getting any bids for him. I had a 12 million bid from AC Milan for him, which is literally a slap in the face. We'll keep going with him until we've got a, uh, a suitable bid for him. But with this awesome end money, we've been able to completely transform the side. So first we got in Belotti, just because we needed some Italian players. And uh, he's a good backup striker. Obviously been around for ages, always been quite good. Left back, another Italian, Parisi. Got him in from Florentina, I'm pretty sure it is Florentina. Yep, Florentina, got him in. Uh, 35 million, something like that. 31 million. Another Italian, got Jorginho, back at Napoli. I thought this was a smart sign in. Considering we might lose some players in the midfield. Uh, got him in for 15 million. Looking at his attributes, obviously, we know he's very well-rounded. He's a good player. Next, we've got De Fridge as well. Just a bit more experience in centre-back because our centre-backs weren't the best. Maxine Lacroix as well to go next to him to really improve that uh, defence. And obviously, his pace will help him out. Up front to replace Osimhen, we have got in Ivan Tony. He wanted to move to a bigger club. Technically, we're bigger than Brentford. Uh, yeah, hopefully he will do well. He's he's got good odds for um, top goal scorer in the league, so hopefully he'll get quite a few goals for us. Last big signing, Michael Elise. This is one to watch in the summer in real life because he's going to be wanted by a few teams. I think Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United will be after him. And there'll obviously be foreign clubs after him as well. But yeah, he's going to really bolster this squad. Add a lot more attacking power up there with Castrovelli and Ivan Tony. This is the tactic as well. Just a 4-3-3. See how it goes. Obviously, DM, I want uh, Jorginho to really be controlling this play. Let's go side to side. Looking for all these players around here. These two as well on centre mid on support. Hopefully we'll infiltrate these gaps here. Get quite a few goals themselves. And then this front three should be getting plenty of goals between them. And this is uh, when we select the best 11. This is what comes up. Obviously all, all the new signings except from Lacroix is in there. But I don't mind that. He can be a sort of rotational centre back. So we've got a new look, Napoli, after selling our best, one of our better players, one of our best players in Ossiemen. Uh, got to go into the first season with no European football. Hopefully that actually helps us in the league and we manage to get top four, maybe even challenge for the title, as we probably could with this team. But that's it now for the start of season one. And we'll see you at the end.
Right, so we've come back at the end of season one and we've managed to finish second. That is massive. Managed to finish second in the first season. Brilliant to get back up there. Didn't lose too many games as well. Got a lot of draws, 13 draws, but yeah, four losses. And uh, I guess this has turned into a challenge. I guess this has turned into a challenge where we not just have to rebuild Napoli. We now have to beat the juggernaut that is AC Milan. They've got 99 points. They narrowly missed out on over 100 points. Just on the last day, didn't win. They only conceded 19 goals. Scored 98, drew three, lost three. They drew to us and then lost to Florentina, Atalanta and Roma. So they nearly won every single game at home except from one. That was just Atalanta a draw. But yeah, ridiculous. Tuchel's took over them. Obviously, they've won it two years in a row now because they won it in the first season on the save. Looking at our team, uh, Di Lorenzo had a great season. Three goals and eight assists, getting a 7.2 average rating from 42 games. It's fantastic. Uh, Raspadori as well got 13 goals, 10 assists as our, well, not even our backup striker. He played quite a few games. Yeah, he must have been our starting one because Ivan Tony only played 18 games. Did he get injured? That is something we'd like to know. Yes, he got a broken foot. So, yeah, him missing three months of the season isn't ideal. Considering he had quite a good record, 18 games and 12 goals. Castrovelli got 13 goals and 8 assists. Michael Lise, 13 goals and 11 assists, which is brilliant in my book. Jorginho didn't play too well, 6.75, it's not amazing. Some of the signings I made haven't really come off that well. I mean, not too bad, 6.9 and uh, 6.88. Looking at the other cup competition as well, we are actually runner-up in the Italian Cup in our first season. Would have been better if we did get the win, but it's good to see that we can make it that far in the competition just in our first season all in all not a bad first season good to get back in the champions league hopefully next season we can challenge a bit better for the league maybe win the domestic cup as well and see how we do in the champions league so we're gonna get through the transfer market and then we'll see what happens for season two so we've come back at the start of season two three wins out of three two on win against Cagliari. 3-0 against uh, Brisania and a 4-2 away from home at Sassuolo. So yeah, we've had a great start. Uh, looking at the teams that we've drew in the Champions League as well, we have got not a terrible draw. Like obviously, some hard teams in there as well, but I think it's one we can definitely get through the league phase in. We've got PSV first at home and Ludogrets. They should be two wins, if not emphatic wins. Uh, AZ as well should be another one. Inter's going to be tough, but it is at home. Arsenal probably a loss. Malmo should definitely be a win. Leverkusen probably could win as well. And Liverpool probably batter us. So looking at our transfers out, we had to sell quite a few players because Napoli were in actually a bit of financial problems. Di Lorenzo though, Saudi team was in for him. And he wanted to go it's not really much i could do about it he's 32 now as well so he was complaining his contract was coming up and yeah it's just one of them had to go the rest of them though were really sold due to not playing or needed to make some money up and we got some decent prices a little bit disappointed about politano he didn't want to stay he wanted to go for more football and then he got 5 million for him as well. Our first signing was Audrey Riazola. Uh, got him in from Sociedad, I believe. Yeah, Sociedad for 30 million. Replacement for Di Lorenzo. A little bit cheaper, a little bit younger. Hopefully can do just as good of a job. He's already got an assist and got a very good average rating. Looking like it could be good. But let's see at the end of the season. Angel Correa come in to replace Politano. Just a, a good bit of squad depth. Uh, to link up with Elise on the right side. Also got Memphis Depay in to help back up uh, Castrovelli. Got in Renato Sanchez as well, 10 million. I think that's not too bad of a signing actually. Uh, he's played very well so far as well. Playing, He's probably playing as our centre mid. Now this is one of the bigger signings I believe. Eric Garcia uh, for centre back. Got him in from Barcelona. He's a good ball playing centre back. He's got the attributes to do it. Passing 15, positioning 15, vision 14. Very well rounded. And then lastly, we've got Gedson Fernandez in who can play uh, the DM role and the centre mid role. He is described as a world class midfielder, so 
I'm just going to take the game's word for that because we did see him at Tottenham and he wasn't anything special. But honestly, his um, his attributes here look pretty fantastic. And we got him in for less than 20 million. So it's a no brainer, really. Tactics are going to stay the same. And if we pick our best 11, this is the team that comes up quite strong now obviously we've got a couple of injuries i personally think it'd probably be ivan tony in there i've changed the attacker to an advanced forward i might actually keep it as a complete forward just so he can help support these wingers uh, attack as well but yeah the start to see in two is looking promising hopefully we can advance quite well in the champions league as well because it would be good to get our reputation up a bit more maybe in attract a few more good players as well hopefully ac milan don't do as good as they did last season because they were incredible with 99 points hopefully we go one step further in the domestic cup as well instead of finishing uh, as the runners up actually winning it that is it for the start of season two hopefully we are going to see you at the end and some silverware is going to come back to naples Right, so we'll come back at the end of season two and we are champions but i'm just quickly looking at it i'm not 100 percent sure how so um we're on the same points as inter but we have less goal difference so um i'm not sure how it works out maybe it's head-to-head -head record but i did notice that we had played a playoff against them we see here i did notice that we played a playoff against them and we managed to beat them 4 one across the two legs so and that managed to get us to win the league happy days looking at other competitions we won the italian cup as well and that was also against inter milan we won 6-1 after them winning it four years in a row and then we also lost in the super cup to inter milan as well uh, Champions League we got to the quarter final which I don't think is that bad to be honest it, that's that's a good run we only just narrowly lost out as you can see in the schedule we actually knocked out Bayern Munich as well 4-0 across two aggregate uh, two games uh, we beat Chelsea 3-1 but then lost 6-2 away from home to them so that's not the most ideal uh, in the league phase we actually finished top we won every game but one which we drew to liverpool and we we scored 27 goals and only conceded two which is massive so obviously the defense this season has improved massively so looking at the players stats for the season ivan tony got 29 goals and five assists pretty good castrovelli got 24 and nine assists also very good michael lise 22 and 18 assists that is fantastic He's really turning out to be a good, good, good player. Aaron Giza as well, 15 and 11. Gets some Fernandez, Fernandez as a rotation player, chipping in with 6 and 6. Finances are looking okay at the minute. Uh, I have actually had a little look at some players on expiring contracts, and I've I've offered my for Mark Way, but also Pierce Jiren for him, so I feel like I'm probably not going to get him. But I've got Frank Kessie in. And that's a man who's got a lot of experience in the Italian league, obviously with AC Milan and Atalanta as well. We only bought him for 54k. That's brilliant. But yeah, he's a solid player. He would probably fit that uh, either the DM role or uh, the centre midfielder very well. And mainly needed to get one in because Jorginho is leaving at the end of the season. He's agreed to go to um, Brazil. I'm pretty sure that's Flamingo. Uh, Kessie was a good replacement for him, I suppose. But yeah, that's it for season two. Brilliant season in the bag. Done the domestic double. We haven't got any money to spend. That's why I've got Frank Kessie in on a free. So maybe we might potentially sell some players. But we might have a very quiet transfer window. Because there's not... The only place I'd really want to improve is centre-back. That's why I'm looking at Mark Gray to go alongside Eric Garcia. So that's it for now, and we'll see you at the start of season three. Right, so we'll come back at the start of season three. Uh, so far, we've won two games, lost one. Losing to Florentina isn't ideal, but, you know, 
it's one that we do lose so uh, looking at the champions league group that we've drawn into as well it's actually a very nice draw very nice draw i'd expect us to go through comfortably without uh, needing the playoffs now uh looking at the transfers i know obviously i said we're probably gonna have a quiet transfer window but then everyone just kept coming in from our players so it weren't my fault this time so alex Merritt has gone for 58 million to inter he actually initially said he didn't really want to join them but he just accepted so uh the pie gone out for a little fee oliviera gone out uh Oriziola as well 49 million from alitiad it's a 20 million profit in one season and Nathan as well then obviously you know we've got frank kessie in david rye is our replacement for merit we've got levy colwell in on a loan which is a very good loan i think personally uh kalulu in there as well to strengthen the center back and right back role scalavini the, f the future of italian defending really great player uh got him in for 67 million which isn't too bad because knowing how much you can actually sell him for uh yeah he's gonna he's just gonna he's gonna be the base of my defense for the rest of the rebuild so genio dest as well got him in just uh, to help kalulu out of that right wing at uh, the right back role kareem adiemi in as well just a bit of a pace merchant really uh, he's taken over to pi uh on that rotation role on the left side we do have a little problem we probably have too many strikers now so i got victor yokarez in because saudi was sniffing around tony and i thought honestly he said he wanted to go i thought bids were gonna i rejected the first one and i thought more bids were gonna come in i just wanted more money up front so i bought yokarez but then the bid for tony never come so i've now got yokarez tony and raspadori but at least we ain't lacking in the gold department so looking at the tactics we're sticking with the same again because it's been good so far. Castrovelli being injured is probably the reason why we've lost to Florentina because as you can see, he's got five goals in two games. He's doing brilliant so far already. Uh, the only thing we've changed is changing the striker to a pressing forward just to suit Jokerez a bit more. Kessie comes in. He actually wants to put uh, Dest and Levy Kowal in as well. That's the team for season three. Hopefully, we can do a repeat of last season, win the league. Not massive like not massively bothered if we don't win the domestic cup it would be nice to hopefully we could take one step further in the champions league get to the semi-final maybe maybe even a final not expecting to win it so that's it for the start of season three and we'll see you at the end hopefully with more silverware so we'll come back at the end of season three Managed to win the league again. Great running with Inter as well. Ace Milan done a lot better this season as well. Three teams on that amount of points is very, very good. We've improved by four points. And looking at the other competitions, we've also won the Italian Cup and the Italian Super Cup. So we've done the domestic treble. I'm pretty sure the, uh, the Super Cup is only between the top four though. And in the Champions League, we're knocked out by Chelsea again. Checking out the squad stats for this season. Castrovelli honestly an amazing amazing season 33 goals and 18 assists from the wing it's fantastic michael lise brilliant on the other side as well yokrez not amazing but maybe he's just playing a support maybe a more of a support striker for these two wingers erangiza had a great return again 11 and 14 is fantastic but yeah that's it for season three fantastic season again not great in the champions league but <sighs> getting drawn against chelsea two years in a row you can't they're obviously gonna have a good team we're gonna go into the transfer window now for season four do some business maybe so yeah we'll see you after the transfer window so we'll come back at the start of season four had a great start to the season winning all four games in the league and only conceding one goal we look at the fixtures that we've got in the champions league as well we've actually got a lot tougher this season Got Sporting Lisbon, Real Madrid, Arsenal, Paukau, Chelsea, Barcelona, Salzburg and Valencia. Now looking at our transfers, we had a decently busy season again. Managed to sell Frank Kesse, who uh, only joined 
last season on a free transfer, but now he's gone back to Saudi for 79 million altogether. raspadori has gone as well, only for 9 million, but just didn't ever play and was taking up a lot of wages. Kareem adeyemi has gone already as well. He wanted to leave. Um, made a slight profit on him and lacroix has gone as well on the ins we've got uh, van erwick from coventry in on a free which is a good backup right back got wilfred nonto in on a free as well from leeds bringing him back to italy just replacing uh kareem adiemi nice good free transfer here as well bruno fernandez very good player is 32 now but obviously he's miles above what we had in that centre mid role and he's already chipped in with two goals and then with the Kessie money we signed Nico Gonzalez as well 40 million he had release clause he is a very good player as well and Alan Varela as well both from Porto they've gained about 90 million off me this season so looking at the best 11 this is what it comes up with obviously all their midfielders come in because that's better than what we had previously they're changed Bruno Fernandes to an attack role just to utilise his full potential for the team. Looking strong now with them wins that we've had already. It's looking promising for doing a little bit better in the Champions League, I believe. But yeah, that's it for the start of Season 4. Hopefully, progress in the Champions League like we wanted to do before. Maybe avoid Chelsea this year. But yeah, maybe we can actually reach a final, maybe. Or maybe even win it. But yeah, we'll see you at the end of Season 4. So we're back again at the end of season four and we've actually managed to have a historic season in the Syria. Don't know if you can see up there, but 38 games played, 35 won, three drawn, zero, zero losses. That is massive. I've only managed to go unbeaten once before. And that was also in the Serie A. Maybe it's just a good luck charm for me. Um, I did it before with AC Milan in like FM20, I think. But yeah, it's, that's an in, insane season. 125 goals as well. Only 17 conceded. Florentina scoring four against me. Palmer scoring three. 108 goal difference. 108 points as we see here David Raya got 26 uh, clean sheets that's seven, uh, eight higher than the next which is Alex Merritt our former goalkeeper Victor Jokeres and uh, Kashavelli had a great season as well 31 and 30, uh, 25 goals now to look at the other competitions as well we've also won the Italian Cup so that means we have gone unbeaten domestically altogether we've won the Super Cup as well and still got knocked out in the round of 16 in the Champions League. Just can't seem to get past that. It's PSG this time, who have obviously, oh my God, they've added Vinicius Jr. as well as Mbappe, Antonio Silva. They've got Di Lorenzo as well. Donnarumma still. Absolutely insane team. But yeah, it's an amazing season overall. I can't believe we've managed to go unbeaten. That's three titles in a row now. And I think this might be the best season I've probably ever had. That's so, so many points. And I can't help but to think it's maybe due to this man, Bruno Fernandes. I know we revitalised the whole midfield, but he's look, looking at his stats. and He can't dribble anymore, apparently. But the man is still dynamite. Look at them stats. Unreal. So looking at season stats um, for everyone... At highest average rating was uh, Michael Alise with 19 goals and 22 assists. He is an all-rounder. He gets so many, so many assists. Bruno Fernandes with 20 assists and 12 goals as well. That's incredible. Cracciazelli, 29 and 13. Wilfred Nonto with 12 and 11 as well coming off the bench. That is pretty, pretty good. Even though Ivan Tony managed to get 11 with all that... Uh, spared game time so yeah that is it for the end of season four we capped off an amazing season going unbeaten in the league well domestically altogether me and michael elise have now ended up on the favorite people at the club hopefully we after this and catch as well hopefully we can end up in the icons i don't think we'll get 
anywhere close to Diego Maradona, but maybe with a Champions League win. But yeah, incredible season. We just need to build on it in Europe now. Need to try and get past the round of 16 or quarterfinals. I don't know how we're doing so well in the league. And then just the Champions League, maybe they're too strong for us. And the Italian league isn't what we thought it was. But yeah, we're going to go through the transfer window now. See if there's any areas we can improve. Maybe maybe defensively a little bit because I think the attacking is close to perfect so yeah we'll see you at the start of season five so we're back again for season five final chance to win the Champions League with Napoli um so far we've had a decent decent start to the season we have we have actually dropped points already but we've kept three clean sheets Drew 1-1 one, one to Bologna away, not worst in the world. Looking at our Champions League fixtures as well, we've got Newcastle and Arsenal back-to-back. -back. Then we've got Sporting and Cologne, hopefully can win both of them, both at home. Uh, Ace Milan as well, which is going to be a tough game, Barcelona tough. And then the last two are hard to go away to, but hopefully we can get two wins there and easily get through. So looking at our sales, uh, Lubokia. Went on a free. Ivan Tony went on a free as well. And we sold Isaac Hayden. And this was due to us bringing in Zabani in on a free. I mean, he's a very good player. Uh, obviously, it's going to give us... Uh, to be honest, it might be a starting centre-back now over Kalulu and uh, Garcia. But, yeah, it gives us a lot more depth in that centre-back. And we brought in Frederico Valverde. To really really strengthen up that midfield now we've got four world-class I'd say world-class centre mids and yeah he started well average rating of 7.57 so far he's got two assists in three games not too shabby it's gonna stay the same again for the last time uh, yeah the team's gonna be the exact same obviously Valverde will come in and out of that team he has played all games so far but he's injured at the minute uh Jokeres has started really well again with five goals uh Cracciavelli as well four goals and he's got 8.2 average rating which is sensational but yeah that's it for the final season it's our last chance to win uh the champions league i want to say i'm hopeful to do it but we just <laughs> it seems i can't get past the round of 16. we're gonna go simulate the last season so yeah we're gonna go simulate the last season fingers crossed but we'll see you at the end of season five so our champions league knockout run started at villarreal with a very impressive 3-1 win away sinking the yellow submarine and then the misery compiler a 2-0 win very dominant at home with them not even having a shot on target then came psg a very tough test as I've got an extremely strong team. But we were resilient and drew 1-1 and took it to the second leg where we also drew 1-1, playing a lot stronger, scoring in the first minute, but then an own goal after we only held PSG to one shot on target. But penalties was a decider and Serginio Dest stood up and finished the last penalty. Next came Real Madrid, where we faced a familiar face, and unfortunately for him, he got injured in that game, and we battered Real Madrid, only 2-0, but dominated them in the stats, Nonto getting two goals. And then in the second leg, it was reversed. Although we scored two, <laughs> two early goals, we only managed to get three shots on target the whole game, and were lucky to hold on after they replied with two goals in two minutes. And finally came the final, Barcelona against Napoli, the Diego Maradona derby. Both sides had early chances. Napoli was pressing high up against the Barcelona defence and were unfortunate not to score. Eric Garcia picked up the ball, played it to Castrovelli, he played in Jokerez, and a deflected shot beats Peña in the Barcelona goal, making it 1-0. Barcelona then had a chance from a corner, however, it was disallowed as Upamecano was offside. Upamecano was offside after a def shot deflected off his back. Again, Napoli were putting on the press, winning the ball high, 
and creating chances. They failed to get a second goal after Pena made a great save. Chances kept coming for both sides and Canate forced a great save out of Rea. And that save ended up being a Champions League winning save as Napoli ended the game 1-0, beating Barcelona and winning their first ever Champions League. And this completed the quad for the season, winning the Serie A as well, not unbeaten this time. Three losses, but many, many goals. A lot of points again. AC Milan were very good this season, but they just got too many losses. And that makes it four in a row for Napoli. It also makes four Italian Cups in a row for Napoli as well. They've won the, the domestic double four seasons in a row, beating Florentina 2-0 in the final, with Jokerez and Scalavini scoring. So Jokerez scoring in both the big finals. The Italian Super Cup was also won by Napoli this season. After going 4-0 down, they went 4-0 down to AC Milan in 26 minutes, and they come back, replying with five straight goals. To win the game 5-4 i think that's actually one of the most insane games i've ever seen i've never seen anything like that and ac milan even missed a penalty to equalize but yeah that finishes the napoli rebuild after five seasons we've managed to win four league titles just not winning in the first season and eight cups as well seven domestic and one champions league this puts napoli on a total of 12 trophies for the season Spying on with the Sheffield United rebuild, however, Napoli have done it in half the time, only five seasons. Just want to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you check out my other videos. And if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment who you want to see me rebuild next. But yeah, this has been a massively successful rebuild. 12 trophies in five seasons, the best so far. And if you enjoyed this video and you're still here, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to catch more thank you to everyone that's subscribed so far as well hit over 50 subscribers now and that is massively appreciated that's a massive goal for me and now on to the next milestones so thank you again and we'll catch you in the next one